All right, I suggest we start. Um, and then we'll think how to add Daria to our speakers. How do we know we're on air? We are, you can start. Uh, we are, yep. Yeah. Okay, um, so I should start then now. Um, hi everyone, uh, if you can hear and see me, uh, that means we've started and we're on air. Thanks for joining. Uh, we will give a couple more minutes to people to join, but in the meantime, I'll introduce myself. I am your moderator today. My name is Pavlo Kalashnikov, uh, and I am from the British Embassy in Kiev. Um, I, in the embassy, I work with companies just like you, with people just like you, Ukrainian tech companies, um, and uh, I cooperate with them in things uh, related to reaching out to the UK, setting up in the UK, finding partners in the UK, um, and similar matters. Uh, so today's webinar will be exactly about that. Uh, you will learn uh, about opportunities that the UK presents to Ukrainian tech companies. Uh, you will hear from our regional COO and head of investment, Mike King, about what the UK has to offer as a country and about what the UK government has to offer. Um, can we show agenda, please? Super, thanks. Um, then you'll hear from Savita, our partner and our co-host for today's event. Uh, we have recently concluded um, a great project with them. Uh, we've researched the Ukrainian uh, tech landscape and I'm sure uh, they will be happy to share some insights from there with you guys. And then you'll hear from Datamix, um, uh, another Ukrainian tech company that is now in the most interesting, I'd say, phase of entering the UK market. Um, you'll hear about their experience um, and their tips and their um, vision of it. And after that, we'll be having a Q&A session. And there's two options you can take part in the Q&A session. First, you can um, just send your questions in the chat. Um, and uh, we'll read them later. Or secondly, uh, you can wait uh, to, to the very end and you can um, have another option, raising your hand, pressing the raise hand button and asking your question live. Uh, I think that's about it for housekeeping. Uh, let us start this event with a welcome from our embassy's deputy head of mission, Nicholas Herricks. Nicholas. Thank you, Pavlo. Can I just check hear me okay? Uh, yes, I think we can. Excellent, because the, the sound at my end is a bit uh, wobbly. But anyway, hopefully you'll hear me enough. Um, and I just wanted to, to welcome everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to, to meet the Ukrainian tech community. And I'm delighted to, to be here and, and help open this event. So as Pablo says, uh, my name is Nicholas Harrocks. I'm the deputy head of mission, the deputy ambassador in the British Embassy in Kiev. Um, I hope you know our embassy works closely with business. We've got a, a dedicated trade team that includes Pavlo, and it, its job is obviously to work closely with Ukrainian companies and, and help facilitate cooperation with British counterparts and, and with the UK in general. Um, the tech sector is a top priority for us and for the UK. Here in Ukraine, it drives the economy. It's proven to be one of the most resilient sectors during the COVID-19 pandemic. And obviously it works with a lot of foreign markets, including the UK, so it's very outward looking. 
Um, you're going to have the chance today to, to find out more about the opportunities that the UK presents. And I want to thank you for your time and for, for joining us today. Um, my colleagues have prepared presentations on topics such as opening an office in the UK, finding clients, attracting capital, governmental support, and many more. For now, let me give you a few statistics about UK-Ukraine links in the tech sector. And uh, the first of these are from our co-hosts today, Sivita. You'll be glad to learn, if you didn't know already, uh, that the UK is the second most popular destination for opening an office abroad among Ukrainian tech companies. And about 10% of companies that have an office outside Ukraine have it in the UK. For companies in fintech and insurtech, that figure is 22%, and the UK is the number one destination by far. And of course, uh, fintech is huge in the UK. The fintech sector is the main reason that in 2020, London raised more venture capital investment than Paris, Stockholm, Berlin, and Tel Aviv combined. And the UK has also 79 unicorn startup companies in digital tech. The UK tech sector has created more $1 billion companies than any other European country. So a set of impressive data there, uh, some of which I imagine was new to you and some of which I hope you knew already. The UK is seeking to be high profile in Ukraine across all sectors, um, but the technology sector presents some of the biggest opportunities for Ukrainian companies, especially those in fintech, insurtech, martech, media, e-commerce, and retail. Ukraine, we believe, has a bright tech sector with innovative companies, breakthrough ideas, and brilliant people. And I would like to see more of these tech companies come to the British market and more Ukrainians doing business with the UK. I'd like to see more of Ukrainian of Ukraine's amazing creative industries, bringing inspiration, excitement, and color to British consumers, companies in digital, advertising, and design, as well as technology in all its forms, from artificial intelligence to robotics to gaming. There are opportunities in the UK in all of those sectors. So I encourage all Ukrainian tech companies, large and small, to look at the British market's potential. Finally, I want to emphasize that our embassy provides full and free of charge support for all of you already established on the British market. We value every single company that's present in the UK and we give each company tailored support. So if you're in the UK or in the process of entering, do get in touch with us and we'll do what we can to make your life easier. And if you're only considering it, get in touch with us for advice. I hope it will soon be easier to travel to the UK physically and we'll be able to organize business visits to the UK for some of the companies looking to establish themselves there. But in the meantime, thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoy the webinar, which is a, a virtual visit of a kind. And our team looks forward to working with you all and telling you more about what the UK has to offer. Thank you. Diakuyu. Thanks very much for the kind words, Nicholas. Um, I would now like to give the floor to our next speaker, Mike King. Mike, you're there. Yes. Um, hi, everybody. Good afternoon um, in Ukraine. It's a real pleasure to be joining you. I'm based in Istanbul. Um, my name is Mike King. I'm the Chief Operating Officer, Head of Investment, um, and First Secretary for Eastern Europe and Central Asia region. Um, I work very closely with the Deputy Ambassador Nicholas and also Pablo and the rest of the team in Ukraine. Um, thank you also to Savita for um, helping us arrange this event today. I'm very much uh, looking forward to closer working with you in Ukraine, um, along with all the tech companies over the coming years. Um, so I'm very excited to address you all, um, all of these companies that have joined today. It's a real pleasure. Um, to get to know you a little bit more. And I'm hoping to come out to Ukraine and meet many of you when, when I'm allowed to. 
Um, I think what I want to talk to you about today is why investors should choose the UK as their premier destination in Europe for investment. So if you're looking to expand overseas um, and looking to expand in Europe, then I think UK from technology should be your number one, um, at least your, your, one of your top considerations. And today I'm here to explain why that's the case. So the Department for International Trade's investment team can help you your plans setting up in the UK. And today I'm going to talk to you about why the UK is often seen as the best place for you to expand your company. Um, so let me start by letting you know who we are. So the Department for International Trade is based in the embassy in Ukraine. Um, we're the UK government's official body for promoting and supporting international trade and investment across the globe. We're an international economic department responsible for bringing in policy, promoting expertise, um, and bringing people together to ensure that we maximize trade and investment to help businesses succeed. So businesses like yourself, we're here to support. And we offer a whole range of free services to support you. So while I don't want to steal um, all of the glory, um, um, sort of repeat what my colleagues have said, I'd like to mention some small highlights about the UK technology sector, because there's a reason why we are considered to be number one in the in the U, sorry in Europe certainly when it comes to technology and growing your business. So according to the Tech Nation report in 2020, the digital tech, tech sector reached an annual turnover of 184 billion pounds. This means that the technology sector is growing far quicker than the rest of the UK economy. So if you're looking to invest in technology in the UK, it's certainly the right place to be um, investing. And as most of you are probably aware, the UK is well known for its startup ecosystem. In 2020, we've seen the highest number of IPOs and unicorns created um, compared to anywhere else in Europe. I believe that it is highly related to our venture capital ecosystem. In 2020, for example, the UK company raised more than 15 billion of investment. This amounts more to the investment raised by Germany and France combined. So if it's money that you're looking for to grow your business, which is very often one of the most crucial parts of any business, then the UK is where you're going to find the biggest venture capital companies and the largest amounts of money that you can tap into. And it's our team that can help you um, find, those, find those people that can invest in your company. So it's also worth mentioning a little bit around COVID-19 and the pandem pandemic situation. Because while it created instability in the UK and the globe, it also created huge opportunities. We're now seeing that businesses in the UK are moving their operations online. So they're creating huge opportunities in edtech, fintech, medtech, and data, not to mention cybersecurity and cloud-based services. We've seen a huge growth in companies focusing um, on either expanding parts of their business into, the, into technology or moving their, moving their business into, the, into with technology being at the forefront of that. Um, furthermore, the UK offers significant market opportunities for new companies. With our centers of excellence, our digital clusters, our accelerated programs, which are distributed all over the UK, these companies can easily access the knowledge, expertise, and the opportunities to grow in the UK. So they're over, I mean, in terms of, and it's our team that can help you see where in the UK you should be going. So we have these digital clusters dotted around the UK. Um, and by speaking to our team, we will understand your business a little bit more, which will help you understand where you're best placed to set up. Furthermore, in terms of the UK being a startup capital, I think it's right up there um, in the world. So, for example, we have 80 unicorn companies based in the UK, and we're also ranked as number one in the. We're also ranked as number one for these unicorns. When you compare us to Germany, the Netherlands, elsewhere, you can see that you know those other countries they don't come close in terms of growing those billion-dollar valuation companies. Furthermore, and I think this is probably one of our most important points, 
that with our highly supported venture capital and funding ecosystem, we believe that this number is going to rise very quickly. As I mentioned, if you're looking for capital, then the UK is certainly a place that you should be considering. We land, when landed in the UK, companies generally have access to very, to very um, large networks and seed funds, venture capital firms, crowdfunding opportunities, and government supported grants. All of these combined mean that you can access and tap into this capital. There's also a catch, of course, most of these funding opportunities require a UK presence. So it's very important that you're based in the UK in order to take advantage of this. And this is where our department comes in. So the Department for International Trade is here to support you. I love doing my job. I love meeting companies like yourselves. Um, and as I said, as soon as COVID's over, I'll come out and meet some of you um, in the embassy and come out to your offices and see how we can help you grow in the UK. We, I mean, on average, um, we help about 50 companies, whether they're in Russia, Ukraine, Belarus or Turkey. Um, the team from Istanbul, supported by Pablo and the ambassador, help companies set up. And that's why we work with companies like Savita to make sure that we're speaking to the best and brightest company in Ukraine to help them grow internationally. As a result, we've seen a growing number of regional investors realize their global ambitions and realize their strategic opportunities by investing in the UK. What, we, what they do is they tend to set, they send, tend to open an office in the UK and then use that as a launch pad for Europe to expand both within the UK market, but also wider Europe. And this we find is particularly successful in the technology sector. Around 50% of the companies that we help each year, so those 50 companies that we've recently helped set up in the last 12 months in the UK, around 50% of them have been technology companies just like you. And there's a reason why. Um, so many of them technology companies. There's an approach and there's a sort of a plan that, that works when it comes to technology companies from Eastern Europe setting up in the UK and expand it. So what is it that we can offer our investors and what is it we can offer companies like you in the UK? Well, it's mainly things around an established business friendly environment. So the UK prides itself on being innovative and business friendly. We're also incredibly internationally competitive and have a brilliant tax offer. We have sophisticated research and innovation landscape that you can tap into. And we have a very large and talented, highly skilled workforce. If you just go back a few slides, I think you're jumping ahead. Um, and then fourthly, we have a very strong digital physical infrastructure. While finally the locations um, that you can set up in the UK, the clusters that we have, um, across the UK are excellent, and they allow you to access the, white, the rest of the world. So, you know, we have international airports, we have the most air traffic, um, we're the busiest airport city in the world, in London, certainly in Europe. Um, and, that, and again, that's why companies come to the UK and use that as a launch pad, as well as huge, um, huge airports in places like Birmingham and Manchester, et cetera. And our, our team can help you think about where's the best place in the UK to set up. So moving on to talk a little bit about the UK and why growing in the UK is also very beneficial. So if we move to the next slide, as you can see, we've got a population of over 65 million people living in the UK. It's the world's fifth largest economy, making it a major market in its own right. So we're already number one in Europe for foreign direct investment. So most companies come and set up in the UK, when they think about um, Europe, we're Europe's number one destination for strategic investments and for headquarters. And as you can see from the chart on the right, according to the Ease of Doing Business Index report, the UK is ranked number eight among 190 countries in 2020. This index takes into consideration criteria including starting a business, getting planning permits, um, a flexible tax, re tax regime and access to finance. So what this means is that companies that companies come and set up in the UK because we are open to business and because we, we support businesses and our policy and our infrastructure and our legal system is all built around supporting growth of companies. We want you to come to the UK. We want you to be successful. We want you to be very profitable. And the 
and our, our department wants to support you do that. So moving on um, and talking about some other incentives. So when thinking about taxes, the UK holds the lowest corporation tax in the G20 at 19%. And you'll see from the graph in the slide that there's a substantial um, gap between what we offer in terms of tax compared to other countries, such as close competitors like Germany and France, where the corporation tax is 11 and 12% higher than we are. As well as this, when you look, when you think about the UK's sophisticated research and, in, and innovation landscape, we have a thriving ecosystem for turning ideas into commercial successes. So we have a world leading reputation in science, research and innovation, and we're ranked as fifth in the, on the Global Innovation Index. This, in, this index identifies particular strengths in our world-class universities and our research institutions, which again is why technology companies come here, which is why headquarters come to the UK, because they want access um, to these sophisticated research and innovation opportunities. It shows that the quality of our scientific publications, the quality of our infrastructure that supports innovation, and the sophistication of our financial markets, you know, us being the financial center of Europe, again, underpins why the UK ecosystem um, is fabulous. And that's why it helps bring companies to UK every year. And then in terms of human capital and research, again, we, we rank very highly. So now looking at the UK labor market, we have a very large, diverse and highly skilled workforce, which is again, why companies want to be based here. We have a very sophisticated recruitment industry. We have a very clear, simple and flexible employment legislation, which means you can set up easily, you can hire people easily, and you can also let people go if they're not the right people for your company. Also, when you look at labor costs, you'll be very surprised to see that the UK is much more competitive than a lot of its European peers. I often get, when I meet Ukraine companies, I often get told that the UK is very expensive to live and very expensive to set up a company. As you can see, our labor costs are, are very competitive and actually lower than most of our competitors. And you'll find that the cost of living is actually very reasonable in the UK, um, a lot more so than, than we seem to hear, um, which just isn't true because I spend an awful lot of time in Europe and I assure you um, it's, not, it's really not more expensive in the UK. So then moving on, um, we all are looking at the digital and physical infrastructure of the UK. So we, there's, again, there's a reason why tech companies come to the UK. We have the best super fast broadband in the, um, of any major European economy. The UK is ranked ahead of all other major European economies when it comes to the network readiness index shown on the graph opposite. You can see we're number 10. Again, you compare our competitors. I mean, Germany does well, but apart from Germany, everybody else is a long way away from us. Um, and what this does is it measures capacity to use information and communication technology to promote, to promote growth and social well-being. So in short, the UK boasts a business environment and regulatory framework that gives investors freedom, flexibility and stability. Needless to say, the UK is a big market in itself um, and also adopts a very forward-thinking consumer um, you know, consumer way of purchasing. So a lot, everything is online in a much more progressed way than it is across the rest of Europe. Um, when you when you consider e-commerce, for example. Then moving on, I want to discuss about how our team can help you. So what is in it for you? I've set up two businesses. One of them still going well. One of them not going so well. And I know that what it comes down to is what advice can I get quickly? What advice is good? and um, where can I get support? So we have an inward investment team that offers free services across this wide range of offers. So whether that's accessing market opportunities, whether it's building your network, um, where to set up in the UK, opening a bank account, how do you get a visa, what the tax system looks like, how do you get hold of finances, how do you expand your business? All of these areas are things that the team can help you with. So if there's one thing you will remember from today, it's to please get in touch with myself, or Pablo, um, or anyone at the embassy, and we can talk. You, and we we will then get to know your business a little bit and tell you how we can support you through our free services. So, regardless of your size, regardless of whether you're a startup, a medium size, a family business, a big 
a big corporation, it doesn't matter. Um, we're here to help you and support you because we want you to consider the UK. If you don't go to the UK, that's not a problem. We just want to get to know you a little bit and see how we can help you grow and expand your business overseas. We do this by obviously speaking to you and understanding your company a little bit more. So in practice, what does this mean? It means that all of our services are free. They're all confidential. Um, and they include things like tailor-made reports for your sector that can help you make informed decisions about the UK. It, um, they help you with things like registering your company by guiding you through the essential steps of deciding where to be based in the UK, explain how the tax system works, the visa system, et cetera. So we provide you with a dedicated account manager. So it would be someone like Pablo um, or somebody in my team that would work with you on a regular basis to help you understand where's the best place for you to go into the UK. It's a tailored one-to-one -one service um, and it's a dedicated officer that will support you. And, and it's worth saying that we, have, we help a company on average once a week set up in the UK. Um, so we're very experienced, you know exactly the types of things that you need help with and we can help you save an awful lot of time um, and money which means that you can put that time and money into growing your business rather than understanding how it is to set up in the UK because all of our services are free. So in terms of next steps, what are the, the key thing is to say is that if you have plans to expand overseas, then please come and talk to the team. So you don't have to go to the UK, but if you're a technology firm, I think it would be very, I think it's very important that you consider the UK as a place to invest. Um, and so please come and speak to us, get in touch with myself, with Pablo or anybody else in the embassy. And we'd love to meet you um, and learn a little bit more about your business. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the sessions. Thank you again for listening. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks a lot for your presentation, Mike. Um, our audience, if you have questions to Mike, uh, then you can post them in the chat and we'll be sure to answer them uh, during the Q&A session. Um, I see some, some questions actually popping up. Uh, thanks for asking them and please keep doing so. Um, I would now like to introduce our next speaker, uh, Yuri Bluft from Civita with his part on uh, our project um, and some insight. Yuri. Hi all. Um, thank you um, for introducing. My name is Yuri Voldemar uh, Blot. I am a social partner at uh, Civita, a management consulting company that uh, uh, works heavily towards uh, local tech ecosystem development in Ukraine. And I would like to thank uh, DAT and the UK Embassy for this opportunity to work on this project and. Uh, hopefully help uh, Ukrainian tech companies uh, to, to grow further. Let me give you a brief uh, overview uh, of uh, Ukrainian tech sector. Um, um, I will be very brief. Um, so IT and tech sector is among the fastest growing uh, in Ukraine. Um, we see 4.5 billion uh, dollars um uh last uh, last year uh, uh about two percent of uh, gdp uh, we see a, uh, an, an annual compound growth rate of uh more than 20 percent um for the last five years uh we see that the sector is growing uh it's a second largest uh, export service industry um and uh, um the software services production is the most uh, fastest growth segments uh, across uh, Central and Eastern Europe and Baltic uh, countries. As you can see, um, you know, the, the talent pool of uh, um, 200,000 uh, IT uh, specialists, tech specialists uh, are, um, are the main region, uh, reason for uh, the growth. Um, 
if we compare ourselves with other countries, uh, we can see that in terms of uh, export, uh, it's 16% uh, and, uh, um, and it's growing uh, the, the fastest in the region. Uh, but uh, when we look at the number of software developments and uh, IT services export per capita, we see uh, that there is still a room for, uh, for improvement. And uh, that's where uh, the, the government uh, um, educational programs and, uh, and uh, uh, private uh, organizations uh, can, can still play uh, a role to uh, increase the talent pool and the number of, of employees involved in the sector. Um, if you look at the market structure, so 70, around 70% 70 of the companies um, work in the outsource segment, while 15% uh, uh, sell their own uh, products and, and uh, the rest 15% uh, are the R&D centers of uh, uh, global uh, corporations. Um, the, how, the Ukraine is well known for its uh, outsourcing giants, and uh, we can uh, we can see companies both originating from Ukraine and uh, international players with uh, large offices in in Ukraine. Um, Last year, we saw 19 Ukrainian IT outsourcing companies uh, with the offices in Ukraine. Uh, I included in, in the global outsourcing uh, top 100 rating. Um, so we, we see that the number is, uh, is increasing and uh, we, we see more Ukrainian companies uh, are in the uh, top 100 uh, list globally. Uh, if we look at the, the companies that develop their own products, we see more and more of them um, um, being, being successful. Uh, and uh, um, we, we, we have already a few uh, global co companies with, Ukraine, with Ukrainian roots as a unicorns, and hopefully uh, we'll get, uh, get more and, uh, and uh, I really hope that some of these components presented on this slide will make it to the unicorn status, which is the company evaluated um, with more than one billion, uh, with one billion uh, as a, as a as evaluation. Um, we also see that the tech ecosystem and the startup ecosystem is uh, um, uh, developing. Uh, rapidly, we see many uh, new uh, startups uh, are, are uh, being launched uh, in in Ukraine by Ukrainian founders. Uh, we also see that their investments into the startups uh, and tech companies are steadily uh, growing. Um, and uh, um, you know, last year it was uh, uh, a bit more than uh, half a billion of uh, US dollars invested into Ukrainian companies. Um, we also see that uh, uh, there, there uh, number and volume in, in terms of number and in terms of volume last year, despite of the COVID, um, was uh, uh, quite good in terms of uh, uh, investment into the early stage uh, startup at seed and the Series A um, rounds. Um, so that's also a good sign. However, however. More than 80% of the, the capital is from uh, foreign venture uh, foreign venture capital funds. Um, but uh, again, um, we already have a few uh, unicorns, uh, and then hopefully to to see uh, some more unicorns in the future. 
um, we see that the ecosystem is uh, is developing, and uh, we have uh, more accelerators, incubators, uh, and the support organizations working in that uh, that uh, uh, field supporting Ukrainian startup community. Um, that's uh, a very brief uh, overview of, of Ukrainian tech sector. Uh, if you want to uh, learn more, please uh, do not hesitate to contact me directly. Uh, and now I would like to pass over to uh, Pablo. Thanks so much for your presentation, Yuri. Um, while uh, we're here, uh, I suggest um, we take your questions. Uh, from the chat um, and address them to Mike in this improvised Q&A session before we jump to, to Datamix. Um, there's been two questions on chat. Um, and uh, if I can, um, I, I'd like to address them back to you, Mike, and uh, our audience. If you have some questions for Yuri, um, then please do not hesitate to uh, ask them as well. Uh, so there's one question from Vladimir uh, um, about the stats uh, for the UK labor market. Uh, you mentioned this um, figure for the UK labor market, Mike. Uh, is this stat average um, it, for the UK or is it uh, for tech occupations only? This was the stat on the cost of labor. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, is this an average throughout the country or is it in tech? So it is an average around the country. I think that, um, but I think what you find is if you're a tech company um, and you're looking to expand in Europe, the UK is, off, is number one destination. Um, so most tech companies will come to the UK. Um, the reason for that is due to a lot of the factors that I said, but one of it is that his, it has access to the right people. So obviously to grow your business, you need to find other people with the right skills that can help you grow. So what we have is an awful lot of clusters, um, tech clusters in particular, um, where we can give you free office space, for example, um, if you want to go to Media City up in Manchester. Um, we can give you some free office space. We can then make sure that you're in an office with lots of other startups and lots of other innovative, creative people um, that can then help you grow your business. There's an awful lot of networking, an awful lot of activity and an, an ecosystem that supports you because in tech in particular, you need the right people around you in order to grow your business because you might be brilliant at a certain area that you need to find other people. Um, but I think it's worth say, say, saying um, that because an awful lot of startups come to the UK, it means it's quite easy to find reasonable labor. Um, and also there's no reason why you can't find that labor from outside of the UK. But if you want to outsource something to back to Ukraine um, or to Belarus or somewhere else um, that's very good on tech, you you know, that's the beauty of tech. Um, you if the some of the costs are higher in the UK, then you can uh, you can get that same service um, virtually from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So thanks for your answer, uh, Rudina, if that answers your question. Um, uh, or if not, then please follow up in the chat. Uh, meanwhile, uh, let's answer, answer another one. Uh, Anna asks um, a great question, um, and I think you'll be happy answering that, Mike, as well. Um, is there any advice how to open an account in the UK bank uh, for the UK IT company founded by Ukrainian residents? So yes, um, so we have, so when I, if I normally I'd be in Ukraine for an event like this face to face and we'd be meeting companies and we'd be taking them through this, the 10 steps of setting up in the UK. So I've sat in lots of meetings um, with Mehmet who's based in Istanbul with myself. Um, we've done a couple with Pavlo where we've talked companies through the different stages of setting up and opening a bank account is an important one, as is registering a business, as is setting up getting your visa. 
So there's kind of 10 simple steps um, that, that we can talk you through um, and that tell you exactly um, what the best type of visa is to get, what the best type of bank account is to get um, based on your business. So once we know a little bit more about you, um, then we can help advise for free um, what the best what the best type of bank account is and the easiest type because ultimately you just you know setting up a, setting up a bank account um, we need to get your bank account as quick as possible so that you can start trading in the UK so that's the exact sort of thing that we will talk you through step by step how to achieve it. Uh, super thanks. Uh, for that answer, Mike. Um, with those questions out of the way, uh, I think it is time to move to Datamix. Uh, but out of your audience, um, if you have some more questions, then please do send them in the chat and we'll get back to them afterwards. Um, we have Sergi from Datamix. Um, Sergi, if you're here, Please do join. Uh, report is next. Uh, hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, first of all, I'm really glad to be here. I'm Sergi Sirida. I'm uh, one of the co founders of Datamix. Uh, we are uh, a tech team, uh, a team of like minded people uh, that has started uh, their journey uh, more than two years ago. And it happened historically that uh, our first clients were from uh, the United Kingdom and uh, we really liked to work with this market. And uh, when we heard that there is a nice option for us uh, to take part in this webinar, it was uh, a really nice thing because uh, we have something, uh, some, uh, some things to share and uh, we were more than welcome to do this. So um, our main values are transparency ability to provide empathic attitude to our customers and partners and desire to grow and to be able to provide growth to every person in our team uh, in terms of technologies and uh, self-development. I think it is very important uh, uh, point because uh, we have built our relationships with the, our customers. We prefer to call them partners uh, in the UK. Uh, and uh, we have built our uh, strategy, I would say, uh, on these values also. So we have transferred them from our internal team to our external team uh, that we call our partners. And uh, we think that uh, this attitude uh, lead us uh, to a team of uh, 40 people for now. And uh, we uh, actually uh, have found our niche uh, and uh, it is building project from scratch. And uh, also our first partner in London was also a startup, uh, a company that uh, wanted uh, to change uh, the world of corporate uh, uh, report making. And uh, they wanted to transfer everything from uh, boring emails, uh, uh, Google documents, etc. everything that makes uh, it so messy uh, to our software as a service application uh, that uh, we actually uh, were supposed to build. And uh, uh, that story that from um, a code audit, I would say. So we started from something small uh, in order to prove our credibility. And it is a common thing uh, for, uh, for every customer in the UK that we found. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, quite a familiar thing for other markets. Nevertheless, uh, we started uh, our first uh, project with them in early 2019. And uh, uh, it ended up with a uh, $100,000 uh, $100, contract plus. And uh, we have managed uh, to turn our customer into our partner with the help of education. And uh, what we did, we uh, explained them a lot. What is front end, what is back end? They had really basic understanding uh, of uh, tech stuff. So they really appreciated it. And in the end of our project, they actually uh, did, uh, uh, they helped our quality assurance team. They helped us to get some bugs in Jira. Uh, also, they gave really nice feedback. So uh, it was a, uh, this project actually uh, was more than six uh, months length and uh, 
in the end, uh, they were really grateful to us. It helped uh, them to understand their project more, to understand how it works. And uh, also uh, in the end, uh, it has turned us into really nice recommendations. Uh, it has uh, given us a nice uh, uh, boost in the word of mouth. And also our partners, they have told that, uh, hey guys, there is a data mix team. Uh, they do not work as a regular vendor. They uh, that's just take your tech assignments and do whatever uh, you say to them. They also uh, take uh, part or soul into the cooperation and it was much appreciated uh, by them. And it was one of the things that um, that helped us to boost, to help us to win this first contract uh, long-term. And uh, also we have uh, uh, transferred this knowledge that we have gained from our first customer to our other customers. So that is why we're here because we like to share knowledge, sharing knowledge uh, on the, uh, from the tech side and how everything is going on uh, from the point of view of developments, uh, which, um, which helps us to explain our, uh, to our customers uh, their uh, role in the project. It has uh, helped us also to build uh, a relationship uh, that uh, has lasted for a long, long time and we actually keep going. And uh, that is why we would like to share some knowledge uh, with you. So is it possible to get the next slide? Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> so uh, to be or not to be, uh, so where to start and uh, what is the best way uh, to kick off uh, in the UK? Uh, some people say that uh, the best option uh, uh, for this is uh, to uh, go, go to the, the country immediately find a fancy office, uh, hire a lot of people, invest, invest, invest. But uh, our journey uh, has started from the website uh, gov.uk. Uh, it's uh, uh, <clears throat> it's a, a website where you may find absolutely all information uh, regarding uh, visas, regarding uh, migration information, also everything that uh, tech entrepreneurs need to know. So uh, we have found a lot of questions on our basic problems uh, using that website. And uh, actually we have gathered all the information there uh, and uh, started our proof of concept or product market fit. So, so what is it? Uh, we didn't want to open the office uh, in, the, in London because uh, I must say that uh, the prices uh, are quite uh, quite high there. And uh, when uh, you uh, go for this investment, you need to be sure that uh, you're, uh, you're going far enough uh, and you will uh, be able to support your London or any uh, uh, city or, or any other city that you're based. So uh, the best thing is uh, to understand uh, your market fit, your audience. And we actually did it, uh, uh, we actually did it uh, <clears throat> not on site. Uh, we also uh, sent uh, our co-founder Daria that uh, she wanted also to join us, but she's uh, unfortunately unavailable. She has, uh, she's very busy with uh, her accelerator and uh, unfortunately is not able to be with us. Nevertheless, uh, we have sent her there uh, in order to understand uh, which uh, community we should join. And uh, the main thing uh, that we have learned from understanding who is our customer, what are the best options uh, to sell there, is uh, to be part of as many programs and accelerators uh, as uh, you can be. And especially uh, we had um, mm, uh, we had a time when uh, Dari actually participated in a couple of accelerators and it is absolutely okay. During the pandemic, uh, I must say that uh, their doors even, are even more open. They uh, provide a lot of uh, online events uh, that uh, were uh, restricted uh, during uh, the regular season because uh, it was you had to fly there, you had uh, to buy tickets, uh, you had to get a visa. For now, you just need to click on the link and uh, uh, take part uh, in this um, and uh, to take part in this uh, events. Uh, so uh, you shouldn't uh, be uh, so uh, you you shouldn't be that um, 
uh, in a rush when you go for uh, your London office and uh, it's, it is also possible for you uh, to do the market feed before you go for actual legal entity. Uh, so uh, when uh, you go uh, for some legal entity in the UK, I think uh, this uh, this topic may be uh, quite uh, uh, quite wide for for this uh, webinar. But nevertheless, uh, you need uh, to understand uh, who is going to be your director. And uh, I know that among our like Ukrainian community. Uh, uh, is that uh, some people choose a nominee director. So there is a profession there when a guy uh, has uh, a lot of companies where he's a nominal director for like 60 pounds uh, per month. And uh, it's not a good option for any company because uh, sometimes uh, uh, there are no restrictions actually on uh, uh, foreigners being uh, your directors or your director of your company. And uh, when uh, companies think that the best option for them is uh, to choose someone uh, who has uh, who has English passport, it may lead uh, to um, uh, not very good stuff. We do not recommend to do this because uh, these guys, the many directors, they may be director in many other uh, many other companies and uh, sometimes these companies do not uh, do everything uh, clear and in terms of law and uh, uh, UK is very strict uh, in terms of uh, laws and uh, uh, they, it may lead uh, to a uh, thing that your bank account may be frozen or uh, something like this. So we prefer to go <clears throat> uh, directly with someone that you have on site already, maybe your employees or co-founders, directors so that you will send directly to the UK. And uh, also uh, when we go for uh, Ukrainian or Russian speaking accountant. Yes, it's very, uh, it's very uh, <clears throat> nice thing uh, to have a guy who speaks Russian or Ukrainian, but uh, we also do not recommend it. We recommend you to find uh, British accountants uh, because uh, uh, when uh, you go for, we have faced, we have, we did that mistake uh, that we found a Russian speaking accountant and uh, the fees actually that. Uh, they provided to us for much higher than we would uh, get from other British uh, accounting firms or something like this. So, uh, of course, if you go uh, to if you're going to sell to UK, of course you need to know English. So I, I don't think that it's wise uh, to choose a Russian-speaking accountant in the UK. So go for legal um, and white uh, opportunities and find a nice uh, British accountant that knows exactly your needs and knows exactly um, IT industry and will help you uh, with, uh, with exactly what you need in terms of uh, British laws. And uh, of course, they know British laws uh, much better than Ukrainian or Russian speaking accountants. So is it possible to get the next slide? Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, uh, just I'm sorry, uh -huh. hiring uh, the team in the UK. So it's, uh, it's quite uh, complicated when uh, uh, you need uh, to get a lot of people uh, to the UK and uh, especially if you want uh, to move a part of your company, uh, some employee, some of your employees there, but honestly speaking, uh, they have a very transparent and very clear uh, visa policy and actually our um, um, our country manager, the founder Daria, also has an entrepreneur visa and uh, she was selected uh, one of uh, 15 people that was uh, that this visa was granted uh, last year and uh, also uh, it's not that hard as, as you think. So it's, you may use uh, it on the, you may, I'm sorry, you may uh, see the details on gov.uk and uh, understand whether it is uh, obligatory for you to move uh, the whole team or you should go for a proof of concept stage uh, as we did and send maybe only one person there and uh, uh, to check uh, everything around and then uh, move the entire team or even more, uh, you may work with the locals. Uh, there are some uh, nice, uh, for example, if you want to go for a local uh, 
uh, vendors that do content, that do marketing, uh, I'm pretty sure that you will be able to find relevant people there when you have someone on site. And of course, uh, they will be a bit more con they will be more a bit more competent in terms of uh, uh, their English, and they will provide you with uh, better services because they actually understand uh, how uh, because their target audience uh, is uh, um, tech entrepreneurs, startups, uh, big companies. So they, I, I talk for about various freelancers and other guys who uh, support uh, IT companies in terms of marketing. So you will be able to get uh, quite nice services in uh, comparatively not that high price, but you also will get a native speaker uh, for your marketing uh, team. And uh, regarding visas for tech professionals and founders, I'm pretty sure you will uh, find all this information. I, I, I'm sure that presentation will be shared after this uh, uh, meeting and uh, also you will be able to understand what are the difference between uh, these uh, visas they are developed especially for tech professionals and founders and this is a nice thing for you to use one of them to send someone uh, to the UK so it's possible to get the next slide uh, and uh, regarding uh, the cultural difference and uh, why uh, Talking about weather is not uh, is not a cliche. It's a must-have when uh, you go for some uh, for some approach to um, uh, to the UK. So <clears throat> when we started, our uh, main uh, mistake was that I actually I'm a sales guy uh, in the past, and uh, I've, I've got used that I need to write directly to people, and uh, especially like in LinkedIn. Uh, that uh, we are a company of uh, tech professionals, that uh, we have this, that, that, and uh, I want to meet you and to sell you. And uh, it, I thought it was wise. Nevertheless, when we compared <clears throat> uh, how uh, British entrepreneurs uh, that provide uh, various services uh, to uh, companies like us, how do they approach us? They actually approach Daria. Uh, with uh, some messages, they all start from a small talk. Uh, they uh, actually all the um, all their communication starts from the invitation uh, to have a coffee, uh, to have uh, ch to chat, to get to know each other better. And uh, the sales itself it begins like I don't know uh, on the third or fourth meeting. In the beginning, you need of course you need to know. Uh, a person uh, that uh, you're going uh, to talk about like all the sales stuff, but uh, we have figured out that it is really important uh, there to uh, understand uh, that uh, you uh, need to go for um, some questions about the weather and it's not, uh, and it's not something that uh, is a cliche as I mentioned. It's something that is, that is must have before you talk about some serious stuff. And if uh, I, and if you just, um, especially during Corona, yes, and uh, we practiced uh, this uh, approach uh, when we visited London uh, in terms of offline events. But for now, it is even more important. Before you start selling uh, something to these guys, just ask them out for a video call. Just uh, maybe not even uh, to tell about their, uh, not even maybe to tell about your company or what, what you offer, but tell about uh, the people who stand behind your company. What are their interests? What are they actually passionate about? Why did you start your, this business? What is uh, the main thing that uh, maybe drives you in except uh, your business? I think it's very important uh, to uh, understand it before you actually uh, start the sales process. And uh, <clears throat> also we advise you uh, get the most of the current lockdown. As I mentioned in the beginning of the uh, of this uh, uh, speech, uh, <clears throat> there is a lot of online events that are held by accelerators based in Cambridge, based in London, uh, that are now more accessible than they were before. And uh, for example, uh, Cambridge has a really uh, powerful uh, startup network, entrepreneurial network, and also um, 
uh, it will allow you actually to visit uh, this accelerators for free and uh, at least you will meet interesting people. As a maximum, you will meet your potential leads and you will be able to convert this uh, uh, communication into something more because it's not a cold approach when you just send some messages on LinkedIn. You have visited the same uh, events uh, and uh, it uh, will give you more credibility in their eyes uh, because uh, what is another thing is that it's very hard to sell British guys online. Uh, they do not like uh, that thing as a lot of uh, other people, but uh, it will give you uh, more credibility and it will also give you give them understanding that you know what you are talking about, that you have found this specific event and uh, you are in this uh, tech sphere and uh, uh, you are even more, you are in the uh, British tech sphere, so it gives you more uh, credibility. Also, networking events are also held uh, really often, so please uh, Google them uh, and uh, uh, sign up for them. There are there are numerous uh, events that just uh, uh, are organized by various um, associations, uh, accelerators, incubators, etc. And just uh, one thing that uh, we have also found and we would like to share with you is uh, that a lot of our connections in London, a lot of entrepreneurs, they're still, uh, they still go for Clubhouse. So uh, I'm a bit, um, I must admit that I'm a bit skeptic about this uh, social network, but nevertheless, uh, it still has, uh, in London, it still has a lot of popularity among uh, tech entrepreneurs and uh, among uh, startups, businessmen, tech businessmen. And uh, also uh, it is a nice opportunity to listen to some tech leaders, but also um, to network. And uh, sometimes uh, they also do uh, these uh, like uh, accelerators and uh, incubators. They do uh, some exclusive stuff on Clubhouse and you just enter a room and uh, like uh, you see a half of entrepreneurs that are based in our London office talking about stuff and you're able to talk to them right in your room. So don't underestimate uh, the power of uh, Clubhouse in the very beginning. So I was a skeptic for now, uh, I'm, I, I'm accepted, I would say. So uh, I've tried to be as short uh, as I could and to tell more about uh, Mm, about our experience. We will also share the presentations. I do hope there were some interesting things that you have not heard before. And uh, thank you for your time. Thanks very much. Um, I think um, the audience quite liked um, that last bit because uh, we are running over time, but everyone still stays with us. Um, and thanks for staying. Thanks for being here. Um, thanks to every one of our speakers. Uh, we uh, intended to have some time for voice uh, live Q and A's, uh, but I think since we're late, um, we will not be having that. Uh, please do get in touch with us, uh, the embassy, DIT. Please do get in touch with Savita and Datamix. Um, should you have any further questions, should you have any propositions, should you have any ideas, um, we will be sharing the presentation, we will be sharing all of the contacts, um, and I hope we will be staying in touch. So thanks everyone who's joined, and uh, have a great evening. Thanks Pablo, thanks everybody that attended. Hope to hear from you soon.